Hey guys, welcome to uh, the continuation of Notes 2-6. So if you wanted to, you can put up here that this is video E. Glad you found it. All right, the topic here is uh, solving related rates application problems. And uh, if you haven't already looked at these four steps, I would take time to pause the video, look at them, um, and just kind of get an idea of a basic idea of the steps that we're going to be putting in place in each of these problems uh, to solve these problems. All right, let's look at the first example. And you guys see that I've coded it to page 149. Uh, that's where you'll find it in your textbook. And for this particular problem, that's not that critical because there's not really an illustration that goes with it. So um, that's not really a big deal there. Suppose that both x and y are differentiable functions of t. We can assume it's time, but they didn't tell it to us, so we're just going to say that I can find derivatives for both x and y in terms of time, or t, and are related by this equation. Uh, we're familiar with that. If you wanted to draw a picture of it, that's fine. I don't think for this problem it's really going to help you, though. Okay, so y and x are related by this equation. Okay, find dy dt. Find a rate of change of y with respect to time when, and it gives us a lot of other information. But I think I want to focus on something with you guys right here real quick is the notation. Um, it's asking me to find rate of change of y with respect to t. So I want you to think about that for just a second. Look at this part, d over dt. Okay, that's the derivative operator that I'm going to bring into this equation that they gave me. And as a result of bringing in d over dt, when I bring that in and perform that operation of differentiation, I'm going to get, as a result, dy dt. That's what they want me to find. OK, so finding a little space here, what I'm going to do, first of all, is work far left to far right. Your choice, bring in the derivative operator in front of all terms or just one time outside of a bracket. Applying the derivative operator, the variables do not agree, so it's a rate of change of y with respect to time. Good thing I got that because that's exactly what they want me to find. Okay, bringing in the derivative operator here, we are, uh, we've done some practice with that. That's 2x and then rate of change of x with respect to time because again x and t don't agree and then the derivative of a constant is just zero so at this point right here I have dy dt but it tells me to find that value when x equals one so I'm going to insert one here given that the rate of change of x with respect to time is two so I'll insert two here okay and it's just repeating that when x equals one this rate of change of x with respect to time is two Okay, using correct notation all the way through our work, dy dt is equal to 4. I don't have units, otherwise I would involve them. This first problem was just more getting used to um, the skills that are necessary to solve related rate problems. So let's take a look back up here at the four-step process and for finding an answer. Okay, identify all given quantities and quantities to be determined. That wasn't necessary in example one because they, they gave us the quantities. Make a sketch and label the quantities. Well, I could have sketched the parabola. Oh, goodness. Y equals X squared plus three. And I could have labeled the, the point X equals one, which would have been X equals one, Y equals four. Okay, at that point. Um, but that really wouldn't be helpful in this problem. All right. Write an equation involving the variables whose rates of change either are given or are to be determined. Write an equation. I didn't have to. I didn't have to figure out the equation. They gave me the equation. So in this four-step process, really one and two were done for us. All right, here's where we picked up in our example one. We used the chain rule. We implicitly differentiated both sides with respect to t. That's what we did here. And then after we completed that step, we substituted into the resulting equation, the related rate equation, um, all that was given to us to solve for the required information. 
So for example, when we did steps three and four, uh, for the remainder of the problems we're going to do together, we're going to do steps one through four. So let's look at example two. All right, so let's look at example two. Um, it's about ripples in a pond, and you can find an illustration of this problem on page 150. All right, so we've got a pebble, and you're dropping it into a calm pond, and it causes ripples in the form of concentric circles. All right, to satisfy uh, part one of the guidelines, I'm going to maybe draw some pictures here, try to, of concentric circles. All right, again, I'm sure the textbook does a better job. All right, let's read on and see if we can do some decoding, practice the translation that we did the other day. Because step one wants us to identify given quantities and quantities to be determined. All right, the radius r of the outer ripple is increasing at a rate of, a constant rate of, so you can stop right there. So what does that mean if we're decoding it? Well, it means that the rate of change of the radius with respect to time is equal to one foot per second. That makes sense. A change in radius would be feet, and over time, in this case, it's uh, seconds. So we decoded that, moving on to the next sentence. When the radius is four feet, this is what I'm finding. At what rate is the total area of the disturbed water changing? At what rate? That's what they want me to find. I'm finding a rate of change of area. I'm not finding the area when the radius is four feet. I'm finding the rate at which it's changing when the radius is four feet. And I'm sure quite likely when the radius is a different amount, that the rate of change of the area would be different as well from the answer I'm going to get here. So, all right, so at what rate? So let's come down here and put what we're finding. That just keeps us on track. We're finding a rate of change of area with respect to time. We're not finding area. We're finding a rate of change of area. And we find that when the radius is four feet. I've decoded everything in this problem. I've identified all given quantities and quantities to be determined. Uh, I think step two had us draw a picture. So let's continue now. Okay, into uh, maybe step two had us find an equation. I think that's what it was, find an equation that relates everything. Well, when you think about what's going on here, we're talking about area. We're talking about circles. Let's write down area equals, this is the equation that ties it all together. Area equals pi r squared. That's the area formula for a circle. We're not talking about anything else but area of a circle. All right, so let's think about what we're trying to find here. So looking at your equation here, if we're trying to find a rate of change of area with respect to time, well, that tells us that we're going to bring in the derivative operator to get this notation, d over dt. So we're on step three, we're going to use implicit differentiation um, to get a related rate equation. So applying that. Okay. We practiced this the other day. It's however you want to handle it. You can use the constant multiplier rule, keeping pi outside, using the power rule here, or you can um, just go ahead and incorporate pi as a coefficient on your power rule, which I'm going to do here. All right. First of all, notice r and t don't match up, so we have 2 pi, bring the 2 in front, r to the first, times the derivative of r, the inside function with respect to time. So the area is changing at a rate that's related by 2 times pi times the radius at that time times the rate of change of r. So I'm going to kind of come up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the values in that I have for each of these quantities. Well, first of all, that's what I'm finding is dadt equals, okay, and then 2 pi, the radius was 4, you can involve units in your work if you wanted to, and in this problem, it wouldn't be cumbersome. Like, I could put feet right here, okay, and then I'm going to multiply by um, drdt, which is one foot per second. Including units in your work sometimes is advantageous because when you get to the final answer, you don't have to think about, well, what are the units of measure for this, this answer? It's already done for you if you're including it in your work. Sometimes you're going to see that 
putting units into the work is more cumbersome just because there's a lot more math going on and it's not advisable to uh, work with your units at, at, in those kinds of situations. So it really just is a problem by problem basis. Okay, But at the end of the day what we need to do is make sure and indicate units of measure whether we include it in our work or we go back and think about it um, and reason through what that answer would look like. All right, so doing the calculations, it looks like I'm going to have 8 pi. That's great numerically. That would be a point. Uh, and then the units of measure would be feet times feet or feet squared over seconds. Now I want you to think about those units for just a minute. They match up with the rate of change of area. Area is measured in square feet, and then time is measured in seconds. So it should correlate with what we're finding. All right, so this is ripples in a pond, page 150. Let's look at example three. Okay, if you want to take the time to uh, pause and look at the textbook and, you know, get, get familiar with, say, you know, what's going on here with this balloon being inflated, you know, that's probably not a bad idea. All right. All right, so um, air is being pumped into a balloon at a rate of... All right, so let's identify given and um, to be determined quantities, and we'll draw a picture too. So here's your balloon. It's spherical. Air is being pumped into the spherical balloon at a rate of. All right, so what is this that they're giving me if I'm going to translate it? At a rate of 4.5 cubic feet per minute. Well, in context, cubic feet, feet cubed. We're talking about volume. So we're talking about a rate of change of volume. So what they're giving us is dv dt. Let's go ahead and label it. It's increasing, so we're going to put 4.5 as positive cubic feet per minute. That's given. Air is being pumped into a spherical balloon. Find the rate of change of the radius. So stopping right there keeping us on track, indicating that we're finding a rate of change of radius. And that notation would look like this. Keep going, decoding, when the radius is 2 feet. Go ahead and indicate your units up here as well. Okay, so now we have to find the equation that ties this concept together, this context together. Well, we're talking about volume of a sphere. So we're thinking about what that formula might look like. The volume formula for a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And you might not remember it, and that's fine. On, on a problem such as this, where a lot of points are writing on it, likely you're going to be given the formula, so don't worry about that too much. Okay, so now what we want to do is, in, you know, realize we're finding a rate of change of um, radius with respect to time. So I need this in my, in my work. So let's bring in, if I'm finding this, I'm bringing in the derivative operator d over dt. Okay, now bringing the derivative operator in over here, think of 4 thirds pi as just your constant multiplier. I'm going to go ahead and find the derivative uh, by this, the, the power rule. So 4 thirds times 3. Well, the 3's will cancel and I'll be left with 4 pi. Reduce the exponent to square. R doesn't match up with T, just like V didn't match up with T. And so I need to multiply by dr dt. And just think about it. We need to find dr dt and uh, that might keep us on track here in case we forget. Okay, this would probably be a problem where I would not include units in my work because it might become a little more cumbersome. So before we even do the calculations, I want you to think about what the answer units will look like. I'm going to find a value for dr dt. Well, once I get the numerical value for the rate of change of radius, what will be the units attached to it? It's a rate of change of radius. I can tell you many students think it's going to be cubic feet per minute. It's going to be a per minute, but think about radius. Radius is just one dimensional, so it shouldn't be cubic feet per minute. It should just be feet per minute. All right, we'll continue with our problem, dv dt 
okay, would be replaced with 4.5, 4 pi r squared times dr dt. Notice what I did. I used the uh, given values and put it in, and now I'm going to solve for dr dt. Others might say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead, before I plug numbers in, I'm going to go ahead and get and isolate dr dt. They're going to divide both sides by 4 pi r squared, or in other words, multiply by the reciprocal uh, 1 over 4 pi r squared, and then plug numbers in. It's certainly your choice if you want to solve first and then plug in numbers, or plug in numbers and then solve. Okay, so for me, I'm going to actually trade sides here. I'm going to put dr dt on the left side of my equation, but at the same time, I'm going to divide out 4 pi r squared into 4.5. So 4.5 divided by 16 pi. And if you didn't have a calculator, uh, you know, uh, I would just leave my answer like that. That's exact. I wouldn't do anything further with it other than indicate units of measure. And because it's a radius, it's feet, and with respect to time, it's, it was minutes. Okay? Uh, you could change it to a decimal if you want, but, you know, I would probably leave it just like that. If you wanted to clean it up a little bit without a calculator, you could multiply both the top and the bottom of that fraction by 10, okay, resulting in moving the decimal to the right 45 on top, and then um, 160 down here, and again the pi is down here. That way it's not a, a complex fraction. Okay, But um, certainly something you can do, but otherwise I would say stop right here. Okay, So that's our first look at uh, solving related rate problems, and uh, we'll do the, the next two in another video.